we're real popular with those elderly ladies because of our friends over at Dairy Queen. Tell everybody about the all new Dilly Bar. Well, you can get one for yourself and just bring your old bitch by. What are you staring at? <laughs> are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I like it when we I like it when we talk about the wrestling business, though. I do. I like that. Well, I would love to talk about yeah. it with you. I mean, I, I had an interesting week last week. Okay. This has got to be good. This is this this has to do with you. But this has to do with you being being, being in talent relations. So I uh, for Conrad Thompson Inc. Go ahead. I announced a lot of new talent on Monday. Yeah, on the Starcast, like Medusa and Broadway Animal. Right. And then I got like uh, Haku and the Grills of Destiny. Right. And then. On Tuesday, we announced Taz coming. And Taz is, I mean, this is a very rare appearance. WrestleCon was just in New York. Right. Uh, a couple blocks from him, and he didn't do it. Yeah, he's kind of been like. He does nothing like this. Yeah, right. But somehow, some way, all of a sudden, it worked out. So he's coming. Okay. So we announced it on Tuesday with a really awesome video, and uh-huh. it blew up for me, and I was really excited about that. But then Tuesday, the hammer got lowered. Right. Justin from Sports Illustrated wrote a story saying that Undertaker and Kurt Angle were no longer a part of StarCast. Yeah. They've been pulled by WWE. And right. I gave Justin all the details, so he had all the screenshots and contracts and wire confirmations and emails, so he knew the full story. Right. And um, Anything you'd like to add to that story here on what happened when? I think he got it. Was there something I'll, else? No, I'll take that as a no. I thought we'd get a scoop here. We're not a news show, but... It was, a, it was a big news item this week in pro wrestling. I was offered a suitable replacement for The Undertaker. Uh-huh. And um, I said, okay, well, what is a suitable replacement for right. The Undertaker? And they said, who do you want? And I said, Vince. Right. Because, I mean, what else is there besides right. Undertaker? And I knew they'd said no to that, so I said, Hunter or Stephanie? And obviously they're not coming out and doing the meet and greet for a payday like everybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll donate their fee to Connor's Cure, and I'll match it. It'd be a huge donation. If WWE matches it, too, it might be you know, a quarter million dollars or something insane. You know? Okay. Well, uh, that didn't happen. So then they said, what about Ric Flair, Sting, and Eric Bischoff? And I said, I already got them. And so They're still they, offering Eric Bischoff? I mean, they, they can do that? I mean, they could offer you if they want. Oh, no. They'll just call you and make a deal after. <laughs> I get that. Hey, we need you to do I this. I get that, but it almost sounds like they're representing Eric, but they're not. No, but they would just say, hey, we need you to do this booking. And okay. that's the way those calls work. You would know right. if you aren't <laughs> Triple H every time. Oh, See, wait. here's the deal. No, It's but, been so long since you've dated, you don't know this. No. But you like the desperate woman right now. No, I'm not. You're piercing your ears for him. No. Yeah. You're holding your pinkies get out. Get back to the story. I was in the middle of the story. No, you're, now you're off on a right turn somewhere. Okay, go ahead. Keep going. So then they called back and offered The Undertaker. Not The Undertaker, but um, Sting. Yeah. And the APA. Yeah. I've already got Ron Simmons, and I don't want John. Right. So. And they said, okay, well, who do you want? And I said, I want Shawn Michaels back. Yeah. Because I had Shawn originally, and my idea was my main event on Friday. Mm-hmm. Was going to be, I uh, have Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon watch their match from WrestleMania 10, do alternate commentary on the it, latter match, and then do a QA. And then for a photo op, the Intercontinental title and a ladder and the two guys. Oh, that's cool. Oh, and Shawn liked the idea so much, he asked for more money. Mm, okay. <laughs> to do it with me and not WWE, and I agreed. So, okay. uh, but then he pulled out when he realized it was AEW. All right. So he's not coming now. Okay. Um, but he liked the idea so much, I guess he told WWE, and they did it on WWE's YouTube. So, yeah, that happened. No big deal. But then I asked for Shawn uh-huh. as a replacement, and I was told to hold on. Okay. And crickets. So I felt like as I was getting closer, mm-hmm. I need to just go ahead and announce that Undertaker's not coming. Like I was promised a suitable replacement. I even talked to his management in the meantime. They're like, hey, he wants to do it. You know, we just got to figure out how. And so I was like, hey, if I need to book him through the office or go through the proper channels, I'm happy to. I didn't realize I didn't do that the first time. Right. All these guys had their, you know, for bookings, email, 
yeah. you know, in all their bios. So I thought, you know, why were they out? This there? is what this is what they want, right? But it was different, clearly, because of the proximity for myself and and the event of AEW. They know that I'm friends with Cody. They know that I'm friends with Tony, and um, I guess they're assuming that I work for AEW. Well, those of us who know you know that you don't, but your closeness with Cody and the fact that you've had to, well, it's not like a lawyer here, the fact that you've had a couple of star casts combined with their event, doesn't it make a lot of people get that impression that you do work for them? Which I, I get that, sure. and I, I understand why an outsider would, would think that, counselor. Uh, but let me ask you this. Is, is WrestleCon associated with WWE? Uh, no. But, I mean, they only run and whenever there's a WrestleMania right. in close proximity. Right. Use a lot of their talent. Right. Why wouldn't we think well, that he does? So anyway, so I, I, I'm not. No, I understand. You, but you can understand where they're coming. I do, from. and I also understand that in wrestling, people just sort of say what they want to say. Right. So, like over the weekend, someone found an article uh, and tweeted it out saying mm-hmm. that Hurricane had pulled out of uh, his booking at Starcast. Mm-hmm. But when you click on it. It was Hurricane saying that he wrestled at WrestleCon and was thankful to WWE for letting him wrestle at WrestleCon because he got to be in the ring with Jushin Thunder Liger, which is kind of cool. Right. And um, anyway, a comment was made. I was really looking forward to seeing you at the meet and greet. And he admitted that he pulled out of the main because mm-hmm. he had WWE duties. Mm-hmm. But someone took him talking about WrestleCon and applied it to StarCast. Oh. And then they said, oh, he's not going to make the StarCast appearance despite being advertised, which is not true. He's still going to be here. Wow. Somebody so, on social media, huh? So on Wednesday, um, I decided, hey, I need something to come back with. Right. Pretty big after losing The Undertaker and Kurt Angle. So I got Kobashi. And I'd had him for a little while, but I waited to announce him until uh, I knew I needed him. Right. And uh, I'd been chasing him probably longer than anybody. I probably started working on that deal in January, and I just got it done. Wow. And uh, sometime in April. Right. But anyway, um, we announced him, and the internet lost their collective mind. Right. Because I don't know that Kobashi's on your radar, but... No, he's not. He was Wrestler of the Year and the Observer. He was Performer of the Year and the Observer. I mean, many times. Which uh, means Dave jacked off to a lot of his matches. Well, he gave him 23 five stars. Well, then he did. Uh, I think that's 23 tied. 23 ejaculations. A second place all time. <laughs> really... One of the most influential performers in the history of Japan. Oh, I get it. And it, I mean... And I would think that he hasn't made uh, many personal appearances. I don't think he's ever made one in the States. He was here in 05 and wrestled Samoa Joe. Uh, right. And I think that was the last time that he was here. Right. Uh, but no, absolutely no appearances then. Huh. No, no meet and greets. Right. Just the match, and that was it. Right. So it's a pretty big deal right. that he's even in the United States. I don't think, and I don't think meet and greets are really even a business in Japan. That's not really a thing. No. So it's a big deal for him to do that. Good. And then later in the day, we announced the Red Hart Tom McGee match with one of the coolest videos we've ever done. The fact that you have found that is a big, is deal. A big story in itself. But we also found him. Right. So Tom McGee himself is going to be on stage talking about that match with Brett. That's going to be something special. I'm pretty excited about it. Makes you want to break out into a song. Does it? And what kind of song is that? Me and Tom McGee. Do you have a song? (laughs) No. No, I just thought that was a... I think you need to make one, put it on Patreon. No, I don't think I do. So... uh, Here's my question to follow up on the story that hit Sports Illustrated with our good buddy Justin. Since that story hit, have you heard anything from anybody? Uh, from WWE? Right. I got a phone call on Saturday, but yeah. it wasn't negative. Okay. It was just different. Okay. All right. Well, I just thought maybe they would say, you know. I got some attention. I'll say that. Okay, good. And, and. Okay. It, you know, it's whatever. Well, I, I mean, they say, okay, whatever. I told the truth. That's it, always a good practice in wrestling. It's unique. 
Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is, because there's a lot of lying, conniving son of a bitches out there. That's true. And yeah, many of them are in wrestling. So then uh, we had a conversation Thursday night or Friday? Yeah, Thursday night. Oh, there's more to the story. With Terry Funk. Well, yeah. I had booked uh, everybody's airfare except for his. Right. And I did that because I just felt like it was the wrong time to call. You know, like after just losing Vicky, Vicky just wins the appropriate amount of time yeah. to call and be like, hey, do you still want to do this? And, right. And even if the answer is yes, how do you go to? Well, tell me what day you want to come in and you leave sure. in the morning. That just That's such a silly conversation to have when he's going through uh, right. know, 40, 50, whatever your marriage. Um, he says it's too soon, so he's not going to be a star cast, which is disappointing. Yeah, it is. But, I mean, I get it. Yeah. How can anybody be mad, right? Right. So that's probably down the road. Yeah, maybe maybe if I'm ever dumb enough to do a third one. I thought I'd get it out of him. Man, I, I took that long road around. Okay. Hey, so let me ask you this. Did you hear what we announced for Ron Funches? Because I think you'll like this. I've not, no. We announced that on Friday night, okay. after the roast, okay. late night, last thing. Oh, my God. Ron Funches is going to host something with his partner in crime, Sean Waltman, called Get High and Watch Wrestling. Oh, my God. So, Matthew from Botchamania is going to be there. Mm-hmm. He's going to have some clips. And, and everybody's going to be. Ron Funches and Sean Waltman will be there. Hi. Watching us. Like and I have it on good authority. Uh oh. They would like you to join them. No. Uh-oh. Ron Funches actually put it as a life goal. Oh, I know. I saw that tweet. That he would smoke weed with Tony Schiavone. <laughs> Just so you can say this is the greatest chronic in the history of our great sport. <laughs> That's pretty fucking cool, buddy. That's some cool stuff. Can I make it even cooler? I don't know that we've announced this by the time this airs yet, but we're going to this week. Marie Osmond? We've got all the Viceland documentary airing on a loop at uh-huh. StarCast. So if you couldn't see it for whatever reason or you missed an episode, uh, you can catch it at Tuscany where we'll have Frankie's Jam Session and Mm -hmm. DDPY Yoga and um, all the podcast movement shows and Get High and Watch Wrestling. It'll all be at Tuscany, but it'll all be free. So everything I just said, you don't need to take it for. That's true. Of any sort. Just come hang out. Just come hang out. It's free. And you'll be with your brother. You'll be with your friends. You can make new friends. Yeah, be with some wrestling friends. How come we never? Why don't? Why didn't we do? Why don't we do the wrestling uh, seance? I think it's offensive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I appreciate you laughing at me, and I know Dave is too, because I'm offensive on this show. But I'm not a starcast. It's like I've got to be a little more inclusive. Right. And it's funny when it's just, you know, you and your your attic and me right off my garage. <laughs> and we're just riffing and just shitting on whatever. But to think that, you know, we might be pre- <laughs> pretending <laughs> to communicate with the undead <laughs> relatives of people in the other room. Like, we couldn't possibly pretend to call Macho Man if Lanny fucking Poffos <laughs> across the hall. That's a dick move. Yes. Because the ghost of Brandy would go up and say, Lanny, show him your parlor trick. And he'd get really pissed off at all of us. <laughs> now you're just being me. <laughs> Can we tell everybody the... Uh, That's a great joke. The story from <laughs> Hazel Green, Alabama? No, because it's not true. I think of things. Don't say that story. I got the last guy <laughs> that'll land on my cutting room floor. Uh, but I think crazy things. Like? I just, I just think crazy, like, like for instance, just something that completely shocks you and surprises you, you know? Uh, so. what, what 
what completely surprises you? Yeah. I'm asking. No, what like I no, I, I just try to think of, of things that would would shock somebody, things I would think were funny, because I, I think that I think good comedy. <laughs> this is comedy 101. I think good comedy has no bounds. None. Well, why, why don't you tell some bound, you know, boundaryless jokes? <laughs> because this is not a comedy podcast. It's a wrestling podcast. Wait, what? And I'm on my vacation, too. I'm on my vacation. I'm on my, I said European, I'm on my Vegas vacation. Right. That's what I am. I thought we were out here working. I am. If we can't fellowship during it. Haven't we been doing that for a while now? How yep. long have we been doing that? Yeah, we've been, uh, we're hour 25 minutes into this. That's a lot of fellowship. Yeah, it is a lot of fellowship. Especially considering we fellowshiped at least an hour in my room before we came. Yeah.